Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I'm going to try to explain to you why it is for me so difficult or pretty much impossible to answer your questions such as what is your most favorite car ever or what is your most favorite lap ever and to keep the level of blah blah of this video as little as possible let's jump straight to, into the list of my most remarkable rides that I was fortunate enough to witness in last year. And to start the list, well, let's start with my own personal car that I nicknamed the Sub 7 Up. Now, although this car does not have the capability of going sub seven minutes around the Nürburgring, as the name may suggest, with enough skill, it can upset plenty of supercars, whether it is a Porsche or Or a highly modified GTR. Probably with 20 times more horsepower than I have. Last year I done close to 10,000 kilometers on the track alone, so I could go on for hours about the many, many, many amazing experiences that I had with this car. But since I mentioned GTRs, let's move on to the second entry of this list. And by the way, it's my first time ever in the GTR on an urban train. Oh. Like it. Yeah, let's see. Well, I drove with a Jew car, but. As you probably know, or even probably sometimes get confused by, there's not only a Nissan GTR, but also AMG GTR. And I was fortunate enough to have a passenger lap in the Beast of the Green Hell. Now the next entry would be probably another car from our fleet and I'm talking about Robert 675 LT which has done over a thousand of laps over the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Holy shit! <laughs> So again, I could go on for hours and hours, but probably the most remarkable moment I have with that car is when the car has received a special alignment setup by Get Speed Performance. And well, the car was this safe that, I don't know, look for yourself. This was possible with it. Speaking of the 675 LT, we were fortunate enough to compare it with 720 S this year on the Nürburgring. What's so special about going 300 on the racetrack? I mean, even every single time Shmi comes here, we make it a tradition. Keep on it, keep on it, keep on it. Keep on it, keep on it, on it, keep on it, keep on it. Yes, 300! So we've done 300 down straight. Yeah, and still on the brake. No, I think going 300 with two McLarens on the German Autobahn, that's special. And I still do not understand how this is legal. Since I moved away from the Nürburgring to the Autobahn, I might as well mention the fact that I drove with the 570S on the roof of the Lingotto, the Fiat factory, earlier this year when I was again with Shmi on the Fuel Faction Tour. Ah. <laughs> this is cool. 
And to finalize this mini McLaren chapter, I think the drag races are worth mentioning as well. Now let's move on to another car, which just like the McLaren starts with an M, and I'm talking about Maserati MC12 Corsa. Oh my god, if you're not 18, look away. Oh. And actually one of the three street legal versions by Edu Competition. Seven hundred and fifty crazy loud natural aspirated horsepower. And so loud, as a matter of fact, Nürburgring's sound limit is 128 decibel, which is equal to a jet fighter taking off. And on that day, when we were doing between four and six thousand RPM, because it was a customer car. still managed to, well, exceed that. Under 36 decibel. That's more than a fighter jet taking off. Holy I can only dream how it would sound and feel like to go close to a rev limiter. But I think another car could kind of comes close to it. I mean, almost 9,000 RPM with a Honda CRX with VTEC. Now, all of the previous cars had around 700 horsepower, apart from the UP and the Civic, of course, and the next car shares that feature. In the last three years, I did some crazy shit around the ring, been in all types of race cars, track tools, ring tools, shit boxes, fully prepped GT3 cars. This is probably the craziest one I ever had. Holy well, that ESS supercharged E46 M3 by Saturn Motorsports makes me speechless even up until this day. Now since we're talking about the M power cars, let's talk about the new or the upcoming M5. And although the car has already been revealed, earlier this year it was still a prototype. Well, let's see what she's made of. And you can understand my excitement when by coincidence I had to share the track with one of the prototypes, although I was driving in three times less powerful Toyota GT86. Now, so here it comes, on the straight. Now I must say there were also plenty of, how should I put it, random rides. For example, a ride in Audi R8 LMS over the Nürburgring. You would think pretty normal, but no, we were drag racing against a motorcycle.
and if you thought that the 700 horsepower cars that I mentioned in the beginning of this video were crazy, how about more than double, 1500 of them and 5,000 newton meters of torque in the race truck. Now less random but still very special and worth mentioning is the sideways action. And to finalize this list of randomness, definitely that one particular time when we were all like, what is this? Uh, when it started to snow mid-lap. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like I told you, it's gonna be very <laughs> snowy here. Uh, to the right curb stone. We should rename the whole Acht the Snowy Acht. Stay on the left, on the brakes. Obviously just follow the line. By now you're probably thinking that I can only have fun in fast cars and if that's the case sorry you're wrong because when you're driving fast or very very fast over the Nürburgring Nordschleife then you either A holding onto your life or B being very serious I got this bro but on opposite when you drive a slow car you have time to enjoy it and enjoy the track so one of the most fun laps I had this year was definitely in slow cars and to start with Definitely the Lada. And yeah, it actually overtook an M3. Grab it on this piece of shit, get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you. Now the next slow car is my girlfriend's old Volkswagen Golf 3. <laughs> And if my car's nickname is Sub 7 Up, referring to the possibility or actually the dream of one day doing Sub 7 minute lap around the Nürburgring, then if we would nickname her car Sub 7 Golf, it would refer to Sub 7 days around the Nürburgring. As a matter of fact, on day 8, we got picked up by the marshals of the Nürburgring somewhere halfway through the track and they said, well, you're causing a traffic jam and you're already blocking the traffic of tomorrow. So that's enough. I'm full. <laughs> Are you full throttle? Yes. Well, hopefully in rough. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, comrades. Find out in the next episode when tomorrow we're gonna cross the bridge. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Oh, we already did it. It's surprising, surprising. So, going into tear garden. I hope that the wheels will not fall off once we go into the compression, but only time will tell. And to finalize this slow segment, I'd like to finish on a serious note by saying that I very much enjoy taking the bus around the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Wait, this doesn't sound serious at all. No, but what I mean is when you go very slowly, you have time to pay attention to all the little details that you would otherwise miss if you would be flooring. And if you have a guide with you on board, that ride becomes very informative and very remarkable and special. With a small car, you have a look for the short lane. So you have not too much kilometers, yeah? That's important, yeah? And uh, with, a big, with, a, with a bigger car, you come out to the other side. That's no problem. We go down here, that's flat to Sweden Golds. 
And I think this should be it for today because of course there are many, 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 many other special, fast, unforgettable, remarkable, mind-blowing, you name it, cars that I was fortunate enough to experience last year or even the years before. But for that, you would have to browse my YouTube channel or even better, subscribe and stay tuned for what's coming this year. And I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video and see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.